Good morning, besties, sis. Welcome back to another video. And uh, if you're new here, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Don't, bro. We're just gonna roll with it today because I am just so tired of trying to like start over and have a perfect intro. But if you guys are new here, please click that subscribe button, please click the like button, and please comment so I can interact with you guys. I can get feedback from y'all, ideas, um, different tips and tricks that you wanna share with me, and just watch me grow, watch me glow, and just progress over time, like I said in my last video. So in today's video, I am going to be showing you guys how I do a little Bible study. So I just like upside down. Um, I do have a notebook, I do have my woman's devotional, a pen, I got the materials, and I have my Bible. So in today's video, I am going to be showing you just a little bit of what goes into me spending time with God. It is Sunday, happy Sunday, so what perfect time to show you guys how I spend time with God than on Sunday, the beginning of the week. Some people say it's Monday, but either way, I'm going to record this video on Sunday and then post it tomorrow. But I did want to talk about... a before I get started um, like just kind of like where I'm at mentally and the why I even wanted to like share this with you guys is because I am not the type of person like if you know me like if you know me as friend as my friend you guys know that I am definitely the type of person that will talk about God and be like oh I love the Lord Jesus Christ I like always talk about different things on how I got my relationship with him better or different ways on how I feel like um, like, they, if they're going through a situation, I'm definitely that friend that's like, oh, just pray about it. God's going to answer you. But if you guys are my family, like, blood family, you guys know, like, I'm not that person. Like, I'm really more on the quiet side, more on the shy side, or I just let everybody else just take the belt. Or not the belt, but, like, just take the front seat and I just ride in the back. But with my friends, I'm more of the front seat person to tell them, like, hey, this is what you have to do, like, talk to God, trust in God, pray to God, walk in faith, like stuff like that. So it is kind of different for me to even come on YouTube because now this is just like in a, a bunch of people. And I do feel like there has been so many videos that I have made that I haven't published where I do talk about God and I do talk about um, like the times that we're in and how I grew my relationship with him. But I never finish them because something always happens like my phone dies or I feel like I'm rambling too much or I lose my train of thought. So I just say like, you know, what? I'm not even going to publish this video because like it's just it's not worth publishing. But I do um, want to just get into the habit of talking more about God on my channel and just giving you guys a fresh like look because there's a lot of people who obviously talk about God on the channel on their YouTube channel but everybody has a different walk with God everybody has a different method on how they um, study their Bible or how they grow their relationship with him everybody's relationship with God is different so I do feel like this is just a fresh idea a fresh face to further your walk with God or further your encouragement or maybe you haven't even had a walk with God and then you saw this video and you're like you know like that seems pretty simple pretty easy it's not too scary for the first path so let me just check it out based off of this video and I went to church this morning for the first time in Houston I was late I gotta be honest you know sorry I have a notification I was late but my boyfriend was like I don't know if we should go because we're late and I told him I was like no because I am committed to growing my relationship with God. God got us here um, and we just owe him a lot more than what we settle or we owe him a lot more than what we give him or what we settle for giving him because we are in a whole other state right now. We're just dealing with a lot of stuff financially, but every single time he always reminds me, it's okay, Kira, I got you. I know you're stressing. I know you're dealing with a lot of stuff mentally um, and we're going to get into that because even though i'm sitting here telling you guys like oh i'm growing my relationship with god like there are times where i don't continue to pursue it just because i'm just too in my head about what i don't have that i'm not worried about what i do have or i'm worried about what i don't have that i'm not worried about what um, god's already gave me if that makes sense um so i'm gonna just be like really transparent and really honest there are a few times on this channel where i have read like this three minute woman devotional to you guys but i don't make that like my whole thing on my channel because yes i do believe in god it is a big part of my life but i don't want it to just be like only like we only talk about the bible and stuff like that but we are going to talk about it here and there but 
there's more to me than just like one thing you know and i feel like a lot of creators were told um oh you have to pick your niche and then you have to like walk in your niche or whatever but i'm just a person that like likes a lot of different things like one of the biggest things that i do like is just growing and motivating myself and motivating others so this is a motivating channel to just start or continue your walk with god and just never stop pursuing it no matter how you feel right now or no matter how it may look right now the more you continue to pursue your relationship with god the better it's gonna get so let's start the video <laughs> One thing about Bible study is I am not new to the concept of it. I have always grown up in church. I, my whole family believes in God. We're Christians. Like uh, We read the Bible daily. I've been to a lot of Bible studies, held in and out of church. My family used to host their own Bible study. So I, I learned a lot about how to just read and understand the Bible. But uh, for the most part for a lot of the times in my life like I was a teenager So it was not like I was gonna read the Bible and then go and preach at my school or go um, Join church clubs have church friends. Like I was just not that type of person I did always keep my relationship with God like between myself and him like that's why I said my family knows me as somebody that's like oh like she says she believes in God but I don't know because like me and his relationship have always been private I am a human so there's not like like I do stuff, I do believe in God, but I cuss. I believe in God, but I have smoked before. I believe in God, but I've drank. Like, you know, I have like, not saying like, you're bad if you have those things, but like, that's just how my family knows me. And like, my friends know me the same way, but I, I do feel like my friends uh, know me more as a, the person that is, a, like who believes in God more than my family does. Like, I feel like if my family saw this video right now, they'd be like, oh my God, like she's making a video about her believing God. Like my friends would be like, oh, like I'm proud of her. Like they, my family would be proud of me too. But like, you know, I'm getting too wrapped up in trying to explain this to you, but I feel like it's just very understandable. Like you're one way around your family than you are around your friends. Like your friends know you differently than your family does. And I feel like that's normal. So uh, I've grown up in church, in Bibles, in learning things about God. Like I've learned how to study the Bible. I've learned how to just take observations or make it more easier for me to even um, just understand what it's saying, you know? So one thing that I've always struggled with, with, read, with getting closer to God is getting in the Bible for myself and not having it laid out for me. So in Bible studies that I used to have with my family, like they would lay it out for me. They'd be like, oh, like this is what we're gonna study. This is the verses we're gonna study. This is like the meaning behind the verses, observations behind them. Like this is a scripture. This is what the scripture means. So it was easy for me to like, like, you know, understand it. But like when I'm on my own, I'm just like, I don't know where to start. Do I start in Genesis? Do I start in Proverbs? Do I start in Psalms? Do I start like, you know, like, it's really hard for me to understand. So one thing that did help me is um, I do have the Bible app. So one thing that did help me is picking a problem that I'm having and like trying to find devotionals that help the problem that I'm going through. And then in those devotionals, they'll tell you like a little devotion, which like is a little story about how whatever verse they pick ties into whatever story they chose. So if I'm dealing with um what's my first one devotional that i picked that i honestly have not been 100 percent consistent on is trying to be more of a confident woman in god and that is something that i do want to talk about on this channel so if you guys are watching this and you guys want to um, do this with me or you guys want me to talk about it more or just join the journey as i do start my confidence journey in god please like this video and comment down below and say like hey i'm interested or hey how's that going for you or hey can you help me out too or whatever because one thing that i do struggle with is just confidence and being a woman so that is something that i said you know what? let me look at let me look up let me look this up so you read the little story and they have a scripture so in that scripture it's not like a full chapter it's just like a little scripture about what the bible says at that particular time about that particular problem so what i do is i take that scripture i read the full chapter take my notes take my observations i pray and i ask god like okay like thank you for thank you for giving me the scripture please help me like continue it in my everyday life or help me have the confidence enough to be bold about it or, or whatnot so that's kind of like what helped me so like having like this book it's a three minute woman devotional i've talked about it on my channel it's um how many days 
I think it's like, it's yeah, 365 days. So you have a devotional for every single day. It's not nothing too long, not nothing too crazy. Um, I did get this off Amazon. So in this particular sense, I decided like, you know what, let me just stick to the devotions that I have right now that is specific to women and how it can help me grow as a woman or how it can help me understand myself or whatnot. But um, because then after a while I did, I not the confident woman devotional, I did finish another devotional and I'm like, okay, what next? Then it's just like, I just am not the type of person that I can just pick or just go aimlessly through the Bible because I do get lost or I do read a scripture and I'm like, no, I don't understand that. Let me pick another one. So like, I kind of need guidance. So I feel like when you have devotionals, they do help you and guide you to the place that you should probably read and then you can go through the chapter and read those. And I do have this, like I said, my notebook, I have my pen and I have my Bible right now. I normally just use like my iPad because I have a different translation and there's also different translations. So if you're also wondering uh, how you can understand scriptures that like you can just change the translation and it'll translate to something that's more easier for you to comprehend because that's honestly what I have to do I am not one of those Shakespeare Bible readers like I you gotta give it to me straight like English come on modern day English I need to understand this or else it's gonna give me discouragement because then if I'm trying to read something and I'm like going through the full chapter and I'm like what the heck does that even mean I'm just like you know what God I'm sorry like I'll just do something else so even in here, I do have a lot of notes because there was one um, Bible devotional that I finished, which is trying to learn how to be more like more of a wife. So the devotional was just like wife or husband material. And I went through the day, wrote down the scriptures. Um, I titled it. I wrote down my takeaways. I asked questions to the scripture and then wrote down the answers that they gave me later on. But I couldn't find a specific devotional that I did want to read in the in the Bible app yet. So I was like, you know what, let me just do this book. And I don't know where I put my pen. Let me just do this book because I have it. And I don't want to sit around making excuses for why I'm not getting deeper into God's word. Like, you have to start somewhere, even if it is a devotional, because sometimes it's just like... I feel like that's a common problem where everybody's like, oh, you need to get in your Bible. Like, you have, like, yeah, you can pray, but what you have to get in your word. Yeah, you can um, tithe or go to church, but you also have to get in your word at home or on your own time. But then a lot of people are like, okay, I get that, but where do I start? And some people are like, oh, start in the New Testament, start in the Old Testament. But it's just like sometimes, like, you can read Genesis and it may not help you take away from what, it may not help you solve the problem that you're going through right now. And it's like, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I understand that God created the heavens and the earth, but I'm struggling with how to be a better friend. So where do I find that? You know, like type stuff. So my thing is right now, trying to be more of a woman, trying to go into my womanhood, trying to teach my daughter, even trying to learn things so I can teach her. So I started all the way over with this and I did this yesterday. So today, the devo I'm on day three. So the devotional for today is titled, I'm not crazy after all. And so we're just gonna get into it. I'm gonna read it to you guys. I'm gonna read the little um, story it has. I'm gonna say a little prayer. I'm gonna write things down. I'm gonna tell you guys my takeaways. And I'm gonna also go deeper into um, like the Bible chapter and verse and stuff. And then the Bi I'm gonna go into the Bible book and then read the whole chapter to you guys and then that's just gonna be today that's what we're gonna do that's how i this is a part of how i um study the bible so let's get started so it's titled today i'm not crazy after all and then the verse is we have this hope as an anchor for the soul firm and secure hebrews 6 19 niv this that means like this is a um new international version i think that's what niv says now yeah but niv and so the story is or like yeah the story is am i going crazy am i the only person to feel this way as we go through life it seems like we occasionally lose our minds this challenge of balancing schedules dealing with demanding personalities and maintaining relationships and friendships can drive our entire life off course like a ship tossed in a storm, we can drift into a strange sea overcome by the uncontrollable waves. But we do have an anchor, our hope in God. What does an anchor do? It prevents drifting by attaching firmly to the unmoving floor of the sea. 
God is that seabed, firm and secure, and Jesus is the anchor connecting us to the Father. Our anchor of hope is deep within the seabed of God. The shape of an anchor reminds us of the cross. No wonder the first century Christians used an anchor as a symbol of the cross. We are not adrift. We are securely fastened to God through Jesus. No, you're not crazy when you feel lost and confused. We have stormy, we'll have stormy times. We are held firm and secure by the anchor of hope. And the prayer is, Lord, I cling to you as my anchor. Although I may feel lost at times, I know you are here with me, holding me secure and giving me hope. And it's literally that simple with the devotionals. Like, especially these ones, these are not long. They don't take up too much time. But a little story time that I did film, like I said, I filmed them and then I just delete them. Is that I have honestly been going through a lot mentally with the fact that I am currently not working and I didn't want to get on the camera and um, tell everybody in the world my business but I decided like you know what I do want to make this channel as real life as possible like I don't want to only get on the channel and only talk to you guys when everything in my life is going good I don't want to only get on the channel and show you guys like when I'm buying new stuff for my home or like I'm splurging on different things or like I'm made I, I made it to where i want to be and not to show you guys the journey that it took me to get there there's so many times on this channel where i've said that i want to take you guys along with me through the journey but it's been hard for me to pick up the camera i've been depressed this whole year i feel like this whole year did not turn out the way that i even wanted it to go like i had vision board ideas that this was going to be my year this is going to be like i'm going to be so different and then it's just like over time i just got knocked down every single time and so right now i am in a state of like mentally going crazy how is that like it just so many things are just making me like go like a little crazy because i have to show up for my daughter show up for the home show up try to even show up for myself but i always do that last like stay on top of like maintaining friendships or being there for people that need me as my friend like communicating with my sisters or being there for, or my sister and being there for my mom being there for my daughter helping my boyfriend when he needs it and just okay sorry huh my boyfriend came in the room but basically i've just been like i've been feeling really unstable and one thing that i do like about these is like so far like they've been literally giving me like like I pray about stuff and God hears what I'm praying about and God knows like I'm struggling with something and then I'll turn to him or I'll read the Bible and it's just like a little God wink. Like God's like, I hear you. Like I got you. Like just just trust me. Just read my word. Just trust what I'm saying and like you're going to be fine. And it's I know it's easier said than done, but sometimes I like I trust them but I forget sometimes or like I have to like be reminded in little ways like I know you're like you're spiraling Akira like you like I brought you here to Houston like you prayed for months you worked your butt off for months just to get where you are and then now you're here and I'm not gonna just leave you here without giving you the things that you're asking for without giving you the things that you want but you have to know that and getting what you want is gonna take time it's going to take trust like it's going to take you just trusting me maybe for a long period of time maybe you just trust me for this moment and i'll do for you later or tomorrow like, you know like in god's timing like everybody says like it may not be right now but it's always on time like it's always right at the right time so lately i've been really struggling because guys this is august what are we in august 6th i think today is august 6th and i still have not found a job like um uh, and I know some people will be watching this and be like, oh, like, how are you going to move to Houston and you don't even have a job? Like, I did have some jobs lined up, but unfortunately, they didn't work out the way I planned to. I've applied to, like, yeah, I've applied to, like, over 50 jobs. People will look at my application and not even give me an interview over Indeed. People will have me come in and try on the uniforms, take the pictures, and not even call me back for it, at least an interview. So I've been really struggling with... Um, just not working and then just being like a stay-at-home mom because this is just not something that I'm used to. This is not something that I'm particularly 100% comfortable with even though I didn't move here with the intention of like, oh, my boyfriend's gonna get two jobs and I'm gonna just hold down the fort. And then we got here and the reality was that I just, I mentally cannot do that. Like I need to be out working. But I did tell myself like before I got here, like, Lord, please give me more time to invest in my YouTube channel, to make videos, to um, just grow with my, my videos and just grow with my following. Um, 
please help me spend more time with my daughter. Please help me spend more time growing myself as a person or spending more time with my boyfriend. And sometimes I forget about the fact that I prayed about that. So I'm spending time worrying about what I don't have and how I don't have a job when I know once I get a job, I'm going to be stressed about the fact that I don't have time for YouTube. I don't have time for my daughter. I don't have, and it's just like a back and forth. So now I'm just at the point where it's like, God, like I really need you to ground me. I really need you to show me what I need to do right now to feel okay. And so that's why I said, you know, I'm going to pick up the camera even when I don't always feel like it. I'm going to talk to you guys even when I don't always have much to say because I do want you guys to, like I said, watch me grow, watch me glow, like just come on this journey with me because it's not always going to be perfect. And that's just the reality of my life. Like there's people that look at my life and they see like, oh, I have a baby, I have a boyfriend, I have a nice home, like I, I've always been hardworking, like I have nice clothes, or like I know how to dress, and it may not look like this now, like I know on this, the, the few videos, like, I've been looking hot mess, but it just, it also plays into the fact that I don't necessarily have the finances to get the things I want, or like get my nails done as much as I used to, or get my toes in as much as I used to, I may not have the time to do stuff like that, but right now is the time to where it's like, I need to really get closer to God. I need to really just show you guys the true process of what it really looks like in my life. And it's always going to be peaches and cream. I went to church today and the pastor made a comment about whatever it is that you do, um, you need to like bring God in that thing. So like be like a little brand ambassador for Jesus. So that's kind of like what I'm trying to do today. I'm using my platform to be another person that talks about God because I feel like it's just now is the time to do it because you don't want to waste another day of your life not trying. And one thing that I always tell people is, uh, I believe in God. I believe he's coming back. I don't know when. Nobody knows when. But let's just act like that's just a bunch of, like, let's just act like, we're, like we don't know. Like, it's just, who knows? I always tell people, you, I would much rather be somebody that didn't believe in God, gave him a try, and then found out in the end that he came back but you 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 progressed your life you got closer to him you followed him you changed your life for him like you gave your whole life to god and then when he came back or when you hopefully god forbid like you passed away or whatever you had your life day on earth and you knew that you did everything you could to get close to him as opposed and then been be rewarded went to heaven went to his kingdom then being somebody that hears everybody talk about god and you're like you know what like that's just not my thing i'm okay i'm good off that and then you find out whenever your time comes because everybody passes away or whenever god comes back that he was real and like you had all this time in your life that you let pass not even giving it a try i'd rather be somebody that tries and continues to try and continues to pursue him and continues to trust him continues to be blessed by him continues to have love for for and from him continues to just just do what i need to do and find out in the end that he he sees me he hears me he understands me and i've and i've told people that i told my boyfriend that because honestly i had a point where my boyfriend didn't believe in god and i told him i said you know what like that's a whole nother topic but i told him i said i would much rather because i love like as a person who loves you and i understand how much god can transform somebody's life or do something for somebody i cannot love somebody and not talk about god with them like even like my friends like i cannot sit by and know that i have friends that may or may not believe in god or like they're a little bit unsure and i'm just like oh, okay cool like no i can't do it i can't do it like it's just like because i love you so much and i know what god has done for me i want the same for you like i pray for all of my friends and their families and who they're surrounded by like i pray for blessings for even like if you're watching this channel like if you are watching this channel and you decide like you know what i'm going to support akira and subscribe to her channel because like i know she's serious about this or maybe you just subscribe because you're just like whatever like just you saw one video and you're like oh i'm gonna just subscribe and like you don't even think about watching me again i would i pray for you like i really do hope that you have the people you want in your life that are supporting you giving you peace giving you love like i pray for anybody that's not supposed to be in your life to be removed because at the end of the day like you only want people who are going to have your best interest at heart and god also wants people to have your best interest at heart so that was a little tangent but basically, it's just, like, I went crazy for a bit. Like, me and my boyfriend were arguing a lot. I was, like, thinking about things that 
oh like I have to get money like money was in my head like really strong because I have a really like unhealthy relationship with not being financially stable because of how I grew up so once I was old enough to get a job and I put my all into that job I overworked myself because I told myself that like, it was my job to take care of my mom and my sister and take care of myself I did not have a dad and the only male figure that I had in my life that financially was like I got you guys with my uncle and got he passed away so uh, he's he was also my reason for working so hard and um, trying to like provide for people and trying to provide for my family so the fact that I have my boyfriend he is providing for our family it is driving me insane and I know most girls are like oh you have a man that provides for you like I used to have a friend but me and her not friends anymore like but she'll see she saw like how my boyfriend took care of me and she was going oh like, I love how he supports you I love how he takes care of you and most girls love a man that supports them I do like that he supports me but I just can't I like I struggle hard with just sitting by and just letting him take the lead I really do struggle hard with that and I even ask God to like help my stubbornness and help me be more like feminine and just doing my part letting him do his part but I just have like I said a really unhealthy relationship with not working so the fact that I haven't been working since I moved here is like really it's been driving me crazy and so I told myself like oh you also haven't been praying as much like you haven't even read your bible like reading the bible on a daily basis is something that is new to me because I will pray like every day but I just like I said I have trouble finding this I have trouble getting into the bible because there's just so much like there's just so much that goes on in that book that I'm just like god my head hurts like please just tell me what to read and just tell me where to go and like I'll stick to that but just trying to find it myself is like really hard but I told myself, like, you know what, God, I'm going to trust you because I know you didn't bring me out here to not have a job. I know, like, this is a test. I know that you're giving me time from not working because you know that when I do work, I'm going to want to put 130% of myself into that job. And I'm not going to have time for the things that I could have done when I had time to do them while I prayed about having the time that I needed to do what I wanted to do now, if that makes sense. So I'm using the time that I'm having now to make this video because this is what I wanted to do. And I got on a whole tangent, I got on a whole rant, and I really hope that that makes sense. So after I read my devotional, I get into this Bible, and I got this Bible off of Amazon. If you guys would like the link to it, please let me know. It's really cute classy there's like you can write on it like oh i love that like, you can write on it you can highlight stuff in it um it has a little bookmark it's black like the words are pretty big the chapters are really big and um this is an english standard version so it's supposed to make like it's supposed to be like easier to read and i keep getting notifications but they said it was hebrews Now, this is crazy that I'm even making this video because I used to tell myself, like, my relationship with God was not everybody's business. I was never the type of person to come on camera, come on film, and, like, literally talk about God. But I feel like I have to. Like, and maybe YouTube, maybe, I don't know. I just feel like I have to. Like, my whole thing was always, like, oh, like, I'll pray in private. If you don't pray for me, like, I used to tell my family, because my family's been, girl, I'm going to pray for I'm like, yeah, okay, go ahead. I, that, go ahead and pray if you want to. But I would just never type of person to literally have, like, to do this. So it really makes me feel good, especially if it helps somebody and they see this video and they're like, Akira, like, you really inspire. Like, even if it's not this video, like, in general, like, hearing people say that I motivate them and I inspire them makes me literally want to cry. And it warms my heart because... I that's just I've all I want to motivate and inspire people and there's so many times in my life where I didn't have many people that motivated me or inspired me like I just was somebody that's like oh I don't have much inspiration around me except for the people that I do watch on YouTube or the people that I read in the books and like I went through a lot of stuff as a child to where all I had was music all I had were books and that was my getaway and those are the people that inspired me to um, listen to music all the time and like I said I went to college to be a writer and I have my degree in writing and that is something that I do want to pursue like when the time is right because I do like I, now I'm at the point where I'm like okay god where do I start when it comes to writing I've always been somebody who wrote things but like I want to write books that get published not write poems about how some boy broke my heart like I've done I've done both but um writing is something that's always been my like my getaway and like 
a lot of people that I used to read inspired me to once like when I was going through things the, the authors that I would read would understand me or they would like say certain things in their books that I'm like oh you see me so I've always grown up wanting to be the person that somebody watches listens to or reads something that I made and they're like a cure understands me because I've always struggled with being understood and so if you come across this video and you are motivated or you feel like I like you can relate to something that I said whether it's this video or some other video that I make in the future and you comment down below and you're like look here like you really motivated me or you really understand me or like something like that like I I don't know how to just explain that because I just feel like I'm a regular person like I see so many people on YouTube and like they say that they're regular people but then you just like look at them and you're like yeah no way like, no way but like I'm literally a regular person y'all like literally a regular person like I I can't get more regular than this like you regular person but let's get into um the chapter in the bible verse is 1289 because I don't want to make this video too too long y'all I don't but like I told you every time I tell myself I'm going to talk about something every time I tell myself I'm going to bring up God every time I tell myself that I'm going to say something about God on my channel like the video gets cut off I freeze up I get scared I overthink it I stumble across my words and then I'm just like you know and I lose confidence in myself so this is going to be very unedited. I'm not gonna edit this. I might put my little intro in the front. Uh, I'm not gonna edit this. I'm gonna just put it out and just, yeah. Yeah. So, Hebrews 6, chapter, Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, verse 19. And it's really not, um, a big chapter so i'm just gonna read the whole chapter and then i'm gonna put my notes like in my notebook or i'm gonna just tell you guys like my takeaways or something like that and just put them also in my notebook so this is hebrews chapter 6 verse 1 so we're gonna start from the one okay it says therefore let us leave the elementary doctrine of christ and go on to maturity now laying not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God and of instruction about washing and the laying of hands, the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits, for it is impossible in the case of those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift and have shared in the Holy Spirit and have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the age to come and then have fallen away to restore them again to repentance since they are crucifying once again the son of God to their own harm and holding him up to contempt. I might have to get my iPad because that makes sense but it ain't making enough sense. So, okay, uh, I got my iPad because one tip that I will give you is um, if you are starting your Bible journey and trying to read the Bible, please get a translation or figure out a type of translation that will make sense to you because it is very discouraging when you are trying to start your journey. If you are trying to start your journey and then like you get all hyped, like, oh, I'm going to read the Bible and then like you just read something and you're like, yo, this don't make no sense. So one thing that I will say about trying to get um, closer to God is reading the bible is important but also making sure that you do get something that makes sense to you so you can resonate more with it and you will feel like you didn't just read something and then it didn't apply to you or it didn't stick to you or nothing like that so yeah this is a good bible it's cute i like it but it just like i need some more it needs to be way more clearer than that so we're just gonna use my um we're just gonna use my bible app and i don't know if i can um uh, screen record on an ipad i'm still new to this type of stuff but yeah i just go on the bible app um i go pick the book that i'm trying to read at the top which is hebrews and then you pick the chapter which is six and i have it um in the nlt version which is the New Living Translation. 
and we're just gonna start again because I don't know that wasn't clicking for me so we're just gonna start from verse 1 and it says so let us stop going over the basic teachings about Christ again and again so let us so let us stop going over the basic teachings about Christ again and again let us go on instead and become mature in our understanding surely we do not need to start again with the fundamental oh sorry Okay, surely we do not need to start again with the fundamental importance of repenting from evil deeds and placing our faith in God. You do not need further instructions about baptisms, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, the eternal judgment, and so, God willing, we will move forward to further understanding. For it is impossible to bring back to repentance those who were once enlightened, those who have experienced the good things of heaven and shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the power of the age to come, and who then turn away from God. It is impossible to bring back such people to repentance by rejecting the Son of God. Um, they themselves are nailing him to the cross once again and holding him up to the public with shame. When the ground soaks up the falling rain and bears a good crop for the farmer, it is God's blessing. But if a field bears thorns and thistles, it is useless. The farmer will soon condemn the farmer will soon condemn that field and burn it. Dear friend, even though we are talking this way, we don't really we really don't believe it applies to you. We are confident that you are meant for better things and things that come with salvation. For God is not unjust. He will not forget how hard you worked for him and how you have shown him your love and how you have shown your love to him by caring for other believers as you still do. Our great desire is that you will keep on loving others as long as life lasts in order to make certain that what you hope for will come true. Then you will not become spiritually dull and indifferent. Instead, you will follow the example of those who are going to inherit God's promises because of their faith and endurance. God's promises bring hope. For example, there was God's promise to Abraham since there was no one since there was no one greater to swear by, God took an oath in his own name, saying, I will certainly bless you, and I will multiply your descendants beyond number. Then Abraham waited patiently, and he received what God had promised. Now when people take an oath, they call on someone greater than themselves to hold them to it. And without any question, that oath is binding. God also bound himself with an oath, so that those who received the promise could perfectly could be perfectly sure that he would never change his mind. So God has given both his promise and his oath. These two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we who have fled to him for refuge can have great confidence as we hold to... Therefore, we who... Sorry, y'all. I have to read again. Therefore, we who have fled to him for refuge can have great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us. This hope is strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. It has led us through the certain... It has led us through the certain into God's it has led us through the curtain into God's inner sanctuary. Jesus has already gone in there for us. He has become our eternal high priest in the order of I do not know how to pronounce that word. Melchizedek. I don't know how to pronounce that word. So the title of that little last part that started off for the example there was God's promise Abraham was God prom God's promises bring hope and so I usually read whatever the verse is I read the whole chapter so I can have a better understanding sometimes it's easier to start from like the beginning because each book is a book so you can't just take something from the middle of the book and think that you have the whole picture and the whole story and I feel like that makes sense so uh, starting from the beginning of the chapter or even the beginning of the book might help because sometimes like each chapter talks about different things that maybe don't intertwine with each other but I feel like it just makes sense to see how the book flows and how it begins how it climaxes how it ends and the next book how that tie how they that might tie into the last book or because each book in the bible you can take certain things from the beginning middle and end and like um they'll talk about different things that coordinate to other parts of the bible basically so after i say that i usually just write um, my notes i title them in my notebook um like I title them like with the date, which is today is what August 6, 
2023. And then I do a little squiggly and I do put verse of the day. And then, what do I say? Oh, so I put verse of the day, which is Hebrews. I'm sorry if this is taking a little bit longer. I normally don't do this on camera. So it's Hebrews 6, 19. And then I put NLT. And I read it from the NLT. Okay, so for the NIV version, it says, We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. And then for the NLT version, it says... This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. It leads us through the curtain into God's inner sanctuary. So I basically read that. Um, I write down the actual verse so I can reference that. And I'll just do the one from NLT which says this hope is a strong into God's inner sanctuary. And then after I write that, I normally just go in and just take, like read the whole chapter and just take notes. So notes from Hebrews because I start from the beginning. So one method that I learned to use is called the SOAP method, which is you start with the scripture, you read the scripture, like I said, Hebrews 6, 19. This hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls and leads us through the curtain of God's inner sanctuary. And then you go in and you observe what that means. Like you literally just read the scripture and then you take observations from what you think it means. So an observation that I could do is um, having hope in God keeps us close to him. Having um, strong hope is what is necessary to continue to walk in Christ and continue to build a relationship with God. You can't have hope and trust. Well, you can't have, um, you have to have trust in God to also have hope. Like those, I feel like those two go hand in hand. So this is like, you can also do like simple things like, having hope and having trust go together like why would you trust something that you don't have hope in how can you have hope in something that you don't trust will eventually per like come to pass or you don't trust will eventually work like simple things like that makes sense um keeping us hopeful and keeping us trustworthy anchors our souls in god like having trust and hope in god will keep us like anchored to him keep us coming back to him never or keeping us close to him i guess i can say um just like little observations about that um i think a was what was a hold on let me look so method i think a was asking a question oh no a was application like how are you going to apply that scripture into your life how are you going to take the scripture you read it take the observations you made from it and then how are you going to apply it into your everyday life or even if you do like how are you just going to apply it for the rest of the day just so start simple how are you going to apply it to your week start simple like that and then the p stands for prayer so it can be something as simple as god thank you for allowing me to come across this scripture thank you for opening my eyes to even gain the different observations that i made off of this scripture Please give me the strength and the courage to use this scripture to um, continue the rest of my day. Please give me the courage and the strength to use this scripture to um, learn how to apply it into my everyday life. And then, amen. Like, it can be something as simple as that. So that's usually um, 
I don't always use that method, but that is usually kind of like, I mean, technically I do. I write down the scriptures, I write down my observations, which are my notes. Uh, I write down a prayer on how I can apply it to my life. And then I ask God to give me the strength to learn how to, to learn how to apply it in my life or to learn what it actually looks like applying it into my life or to even like not be stubborn to know that this is something that I need to do but I let my pride get in the way and just don't apply it to my life so that is how I study um, my Bible that's how I learn what works for me and what makes sense for me that is something that I know won't confuse me or that is something that I know is really simple it's really easy for me and then over time it could be more broader than that but sometimes you do have to start from the basics even if you are somebody that grew up in church like me sometimes whew, I have the hiccups sometimes you do have to start from the basics I grew up in church okay y'all my daughter had to get changed so my boyfriend came in and changed her but while I was doing that I did take a few notes I am going to reread it once I'm done like um, stopping this video um, I do still have to pray so I am going to just share you guys share with you guys what I have so far and I do have other things I have to do today so this is just a little starter of how I do start my like how I do my Bible studies or whatever so a little bit of notes that I did take is build a more mature relationship with God and build a more mature understanding. So the reason that I wrote that is because in the beginning it basically said let us stop going over basic teachings about Christ again and again. So for me I took that as I need to start being more confident and more mature with my relationship with God. Let me write that down. Build a more mature relationship and I'm gonna put have confidence. Because like I said, I am somebody that has grown up in church, like that's just my life. But I do feel like, uh, what I was saying before I started the video is, you can be somebody that has grown up in church, been around people that talk about God, your mom could be a person, your mom could be on the praise team and your dad could be a pastor and then you still don't have your own relationship with him because the only relationship you have with him is the ones that were given to you. So I did, like I went through my life and I decided like you know what like and my family has always told me like yeah we can pray for you pray with you force you not force you but like read the bible to you and bring you to bible studies but until you have your own relationship with God like it'll it's not gonna matter how much I try to teach like it will matter but like you guys know what I'm saying like you know like at some point you have to have your own relationship with God for it to like really impact you because your parents can do something and then it will it might not impact you as opposed to like you doing it for yourself and um like my mom would always tell me like i can't get you into heaven as much as i love you as much as i care about you you're gonna have to eventually have your own relationship with god for yourself and like when i had my daughter i told myself like there's certain things that i have to do as a woman as an adult like i i am responsible for a life that god gave me and it is my job to raise this life to be her fullest potential in God and like have the best relationship that I could teach her to have with him and I can't do that for her if I'm not doing that for myself so when I did have my daughter I went through a lot of like things of like dang I have to really be more mature in certain areas that I like maturity in and I have to be more um I have to learn a lot of things for myself so it's easier for me to teach her and I have to do a lot of things for myself so that way she can understand um like these are what this is what a woman does this is what like i have to do growing up so one thing that i did have that I took, did uh, one thing that i did tell myself is i have to be more mature when it comes to god like i have to be more open about it like i have to start praying with and for her i have to start getting into my bible and teaching her things about what the bible says because the longer the the world continues it's only going to get worse especially when she gets older and i have to be that person that's like I have to stand my ground and defend her and also teach her like what the bible says and what god says not just me but like her father as well but you know so the bible does say like just build a more mature relationship with god like for me sometimes if you're new sometimes there, there's nothing wrong with starting from the basics starting from the beginning but like, 
there's only so much that you need to know about the beginning before God's like, okay, come on. Like, why do we have to keep going through the same thing? Like, after a while, God's like, okay, girl, like, let's move on to the next thing. And that's kind of, like, where I'm at. So that's why I wrote, I need to build a more mature relationship with God and have more mature understandings and also have confidence in the fact of, like, I can pray and I can live my life um, for him. But sometimes I'm like, oh, well, I'm not doing what the next person's doing or, like, I don't have that kind of relationship with them, so I'm not necessarily confident in my own walk. But as long as you're trying to do your best and, like, you're progressively growing and, like, you're not still stuck in the middle, like, yeah, you can pray, but, like, you, there's also other steps you need to take to build a relationship with God. Like, you can't be praying. You can't only pray forever. You know, like, eventually you're going to have to um, go talk about him. You're going to have to maybe pray for someone else. You're going to have to maybe get involved in some kind of, like, church or, like, Bible study group. Like, you're going to have to eventually step out of, like, your comfort zone. And that's building the maturity part and having confidence enough to even do that. Because it's not always easy to, like, step out with God. Like, like I said, when I was younger, I used to just keep my relationship with him to myself because that's where I was comfortable. And also, I wrote, you know what's right, so walk in it. I put walk in in. So walk in it. So uh, because it says that it's impossible to bring back to repentance those who are once enlightened and who have then turned away from God. And I take that as when I was younger, um, my uncle who used to host the Bible studies would always say like, once you know what's right, God holds you. God holds you accountable for it. So you can't say, um, "Oh, I know God." Like, this is for me. Let me not talk about it. Let's talk about me. And I tell, I go through this with myself. Akira, you can't say that God is somebody that is there for you. He loves you. He cares about you. He's always gonna take care of you. And I have like little things on my wall that remind me as well. Like it says, walk by faith, walk by faith and not by sight. Like you can't say you have faith in God. You can't say like, oh, God's gonna always answer your prayers and you don't have nothing to worry about. And then you know that the Bible says like God's got you, but then you're still worrying about the things that God tells you not to worry about. And God's gonna hold you accountable for it to be like a cure. Like, do you really trust me or are you trusting your situation? Because your situation may look like you don't have time or you don't have money or you don't have um, all the things that you're asking for. But when you but when you trust me and you trust like when you trust when you continue to trust me and you trust in me to get to where you're at now, you are living in the best like the best area that you didn't think that you would get. You were living in a different scenario that you didn't think that would even be possible for you. So, like, I don't know if that may make sense to you guys, but, like, are you trusting me or are you trusting your situation? Like, you can't say that you trust me and then double back around and then continue to worry about the things that you're trusting me to do for you. So, that's why I wrote, like, you know what's right and you know what's right to care to trust him. You know what's right to not worry about everything. You know what's right to just give it all to God and just trust him and stuff. So, now it's time to believe in that and then just let God handle it. Just leave it there. Like, let God be the judge of that problem. Don't stress yourself about it because you can't do nothing about it by worrying. God's going to do more than you are because you're sitting here worrying about something and you're not even getting it done. God's like, you know what? I see my daughter worrying about it, so let me go get this done for her. So that's why I wrote that. And then it, the next thing I wrote is God is my anchor when I feel like I am drifting too far. When I feel like I am spiraling too far, I am worrying too much. I'm like panicking. I stress like every single day. Like I every day, like my boyfriend is tired of it because every day it's a new thing with me. Every day I have something that stresses me out. And it's nothing like that's super crazy it's simple stuff like oh we don't have a couch we don't have a table how are we gonna get a couch how are we gonna get a table um we've been living here for two months and we still don't have these things like, i need these things or else i can't record a video because i don't want people on social media to be like oh like she doesn't even have a, house, a couch in her house like i worry about simple stuff like that when it's just like when i like i need god to be like okay girl i got you that couch will come that table will come what are you doing now that shows me that you're even going to trust me to get you that couch and that table or whatever it is that you're stressing about so sometimes it sometimes i don't come to those conclusions on my own sometimes it's my boyfriend that's like akira you need to go pray akira let's breathe i got you or sometimes i feel like god uses my boyfriend to say certain things that i need to hear like i just hug him and i'm like you know what you're right like that's okay i'm sorry for the angle change 
but my phone is dying and that's my sign that like yeah girl you talking about some good stuff but you talking a little bit too much because now your phone needs to be charged and now i'm recording while it's charging but yeah so that was that last point the next point that i put is you are accountable for the goodness of god which means that once you learn in your own personal life like i said i'm gonna talk for myself i don't want to talk for nobody else but I know God's got me. I know God's pro providing for me. I know God hears my prayers. I know God is listening. I know God watches over me and my family. He keeps us safe. So now that I know those things, I am accountable to either share that with other people. I'm accountable to uphold that, like expect that from him. I'm accountable to believe it. I'm accountable to, like I said, like walk that in my everyday life. Because now that I know certain things about him, like I can't act like I don't know those things. Because then I'm accountable for acting like I don't know the truth, basically. The next thing that I wrote is I have a bigger purpose in God. And I wrote that one because they said... Uh, in Hebrews first in Hebrews chapter 6 verse what verse did I get that from I guess verse 10 to 12 it says for God is not unjust he will not forget how hard you've worked for him and how you have shown your love to him by caring for the other believers as you still do our great desire is that you will keep on loving others as long as life lasts in order to make certain that what you hope for will come true then you will not become spiritually dull and indifferent. Instead, you will follow the example of those who are going to inherit God's promises because of their faith and endurance. So that just shows that I have a bigger purpose in my life than just worrying about what I don't have. I have a bigger purpose in my life than just like acting like I don't have nothing to do or complaining about what I can't do right now. I have a bigger purpose in my life than just always complaining about the fact that I don't have a job. Um just god has a purpose for everybody in their life whether or not you know your purpose or not i do think that you should always ask god to show you what your purpose is and i feel like my purpose is like the vibe like it says continue to love those who believe and even also love those who don't believe because you you never know you may you loving those people may just be their need or their reason to be like you know what well, like, i wonder why she loves me that much or maybe uh maybe i should go <coughs> <coughs> i'm sorry i need some water i'm talking too much but um just with god you always have a bigger purpose than what your situation may look like like i know i have a bigger purpose than complaining about the fact that i don't have a job i know i have a bigger purpose than even having the job specifically so just understanding that no matter what your situation looks like around you you always have a bigger purpose in god and then i also wrote keep working hard god sees you in my i wrote that down because it says um what did it say it says he will not forget how hard you have worked for him and how you have shown your love to him by caring for other believers as you still do so i know i complain about doing the same thing every single day i complain about like i'm tired of doing this god i'm tired of folding the i'm tired of doing the laundry all the time i'm tired of being the only one that does this i'm tired of making the bed all the time i'm tired of like taking care of my daughter sometimes but god understands that just as much as i understand i do have a bigger purpose so this can be god just preparing me for whatever that bigger purpose is like he sees that i'm working hard he sees that i'm trying he knows that i'm stressing but he sees like okay like she's still getting her stuff done like even making this video like maybe this is like one purpose that i have in my life to just be like the jesus ambassador you know so just understanding like god has bigger plans and purposes for me and like jeremiah 29 11 like for i know the plans i have for you says the lord like god when you give your life to him he always has a bigger purpose for you and even if you like i feel like even if you haven't completely gave your life to god like god still has a plan for you but you're not going to understand that plan until you come to jesus like i feel like everybody's like you're never going to understand like what like you may have a plan for the way you want your life to go but you're never going to understand like how much bigger god's plan for you is until you come to god so just keep working hard
God sees what you're doing. Like, it may not feel like he sees you, because sometimes for me, it did not feel like he saw me either. I was like, God, like, I'm continuing to do the same things. I'm encouraging everybody else when I need then I'm encouraging everybody else when I'm the one that needs encouraging right now. I'm praying for people that may not even think to pray about me. I'm loving on people that may not be loving on me. Like, I'm doing a lot of things, or I'm even doing those things for the people that are giving it back to me. And I'm still, like, sad or depressed or going through a bunch of stuff and because i don't have the things that i think i should have and god's telling me like girl like even those things you think you should have that's not even the amount of things that you're going to have if you keep trusting me or you keep believing in me so just keep working hard god sees you and i that's that's what i have so far i'm probably going to go back again and um read it again and write more notes and then after that i always do write a little prayer and yesterday i did do um a little chart that i put pray listen and follow ask for signs and clarity and guidance or ask for signs clarity guidance or direction anything necessary that you need to follow him so pray about something that you're having trouble with um wait and listen to his response whether it's listening to somebody that may say something that you needed to hear whether it's going to church whether it's reading the bible whether it's reading a devotional or something just take time to listen to him and then once he says what he has to say follow what he has to tell you follow like after that follow what he says you have to do so i usually write like a little prayer and you like today the prayer is going to be like lord thank you for even allowing me to make this video thank you for even giving me the confidence to speak about this on my phone and thank you and please give me the confidence to upload it and not have to worry about what anybody has to say or not have to worry about being judged by others please give me the confidence to know that what i'm doing is what you want me to do and um i pray for everybody that is watching this video i pray that you give them the strength that they need to keep on going show them that you are their anchor even when they feel like they're um but even when they feel like they're drifting too far or even when they feel like they're just spiraling please show them that you are their anchor and that you are there for them you see them you hear them you hear their prayers please give them the peace of mind that they need please give them the grace that they need over their everyday life um thank you for even allowing me to make this video like this is just really crazy that i'm even saying this type of stuff because like you 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 know how i am and like this is how i really be talking and it's just like this is just really how i talk to him um please allow who please allow me to learn how to just be more mature in our relationship or more mature in my spiritual walk and journey with you please allow me to even Please don't allow this to be the only time that I talk about this on my channel. Please just fill my mind with creative ideas and different things that I just feel like I have to share with the people that watch this, the people that subscribe, the people that don't subscribe, the people that may be clicking and leaving and clicking and they want to stay and talk. Um, I just thank you for even allowing me to get through this whole video without feeling nervous or without feeling shy or anxious or anything like that. Like It is really a great feeling to even come on this camera and just share your word because this is new for me um i pray for those who are watching this like i said please show them that you love them please show them that you are their anchor and that they should trust in you please remove all the reasons out of their life that they need or that they're making please remove all the excuses out of their life that they are making to not get closer to you please remove all of the people in their lives that they are keeping around that are not giving them or how do I say this? Please remove all the people in their li that in their life that are not encouraging them to move closer to you. And please give them peace in their life. Please give them love in their life. And only surround them with people who do love and care about them. And also love and care about you. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Um, so that's usually like one of the type of prayers that I do. Um, when I do go and pray, I normally go and walk. So like that would be something that I probably would like just write down just because I'm not used to praying on camera. So I'm sorry if that seemed a little bit like choppy or whatnot. But all in all, I do thank you guys for watching this video. I thank you guys for um, taking the time to even under taking the time to see how I grow closer to God or how I study my bible or how i learned how i'm learning how to just study my bible by myself for myself and also just to be a better person um 
I do pray that you guys have an amazing day, an amazing Sunday, and I do pray that you guys have taken something away from this video that will help you throughout the week, or that'll just help you throughout the day, because sometimes it's just like, we ain't even worried about the rest of the week, we're just trying to get through today. Um, and yeah, if you guys have any comments, please comment them down below, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and thank you for enjoying today's vibes. Thank you.